Hey folks, uh, I think it's probably time for another uh, Corvair race car resurrection episode, as it were. I haven't done any work on the car over the winter until now, and it's still not really warm, but at least it's officially spring, so I'm working on it now. Uh, I posted a little uh, quick Facebook post about how I uh, ripped up my, my finger with the die grinder burr. But that's healing now, so I can touch things again without it hurting too much. And uh, I'm, I worked on a set of pistons, got them done. Well, actually, while I was ruining my finger with the die grinder. And I thought I'd talk about it. Um, so let's, uh, let's describe a little bit of what these pistons are and the little bit that I've done to get them into the balance level that I think they should have. And this might be some information that's good for people that aren't really familiar with the, well, the technicalities, shall we say, of a racing engine and a Corvair one uh, specifically. But this kind of applies to a lot of different racing technology. Um, and for some of the people out there that's been doing this for a long time, like I have off and on, it's going to be... Uh, a review, let's say. So let's get to it. What do we have here? Well, uh, we have a bunch of pistons. And in interestingly, uh, when I was looking at the package, I realized that these look like the pistons that I bought from Bob Coffin back in 1995. So they're uh, brand new, but been sitting in, in the box on the shelf for a while. These are Arias Custom Pistons. Uh, the particular ones I'm using, I've talked about long rod pistons, and uh, I can explain what that is. But first, I just want to show the, uh, let's see, the profile of the piston itself. Uh, they have, there are pop-ups for higher compression. Uh, there is a little flame groove. Let's see, let's put it like this, a little flame groove uh, in the top. Uh, the top is coated with heat resistant coating and the skirt is coated with, let's see, I'll put it over here. The skirt is coated with uh, uh, friction reducing materials. Not all pistons come this way. It's an extra process. Some of the pistons I've used have it, some don't have it. Um, the theory is it makes them last longer and uh, that's the theory and that's my hope. So we'll, we'll see. Um, I want to show uh, the difference between a standard configuration piston in terms of the connecting rods and a long rod uh, piston. Uh, here, I have a, a, a racing piston, but you can see it's a racing piston, but with a standard lane, uh, actually Corvair uh, original connecting rod. Now. Let me get a pointer here. Uh, let me use this pen. Uh, you can see that, like regular pistons, the um, wrist pin is well down, well distanced from the oil ring. Notice two, in the normal two uh, compression rings, and then an oil ring in there. So this is this is the regular, regular stuff. Um, this one is in fact not full floating. So this is a regular, normal, but racing uh, setup that I have on the shelf. What, I what I've used uh, when I was racing and what I'm building now, it's a full floating setup. Full floating wrist pins mean that, uh, do I have one here? that the wrist pins, actually, I don't know if I want to, I'm not going to play around with it. I have not clearanced these things yet. So um, the wrist pins slide in and out, and they slide on the connecting rod. So what that means is you have to have some way to hold them in place. So these pistons have buttons. These are machined aluminum inserts 
that go in. And the reason I'm talking around all this is because notice where the button is. Notice where the oil ring is. The, the oil ring goes right through where the hole is, where the hole is for the connecting rod. What does that mean? Well, theoretically, it is better geometry for power creation, theoretically, and I'm taking people's word for it. Uh, people have mentioned that, well, yeah, the rods are heavier. Okay, well, maybe they are. Uh, I this is what I have, and this is what I've been using. So I know these, and I know how they work. So I'm using these. Um, so anyway, these buttons are one way of holding, and there's a button that goes on the other side too. I just don't have it in there. These buttons are what hold the the wrist pin in position. Now a lot of uh, pistons would have a groove in there and a C clip in there, and you you put the C clip in, and it and it snaps into a groove and it holds the it holds the piston in I mean the wrist pin in place but these have buttons so that is um, that is uh, the the configuration of of the um, piston now let's talk about balancing which is what I wanted to really mention Everybody always uh, ha talks about balancing, and it is, of course, important everywhere, but mostly the, the higher you rev an engine, the, uh, the more important it is. And nowadays, uh, the import folks with their 9,000 RPM engines talk about balancing all the components down to 0.1 or 0.2 grams. That means there any two, for instance, pistons. Uh, connecting rods, whatever, have to be within 0.2 grams. Now, I don't plan on revving this over seven grand vintage. I want it to last. Uh, so I'm going to balance these, or they have been, I'm, I'm doing my balancing, let's say, to a half a gram. Uh, when I raced in the 90s, I balanced to one gram, which I thought was fine. People thought was fine. Uh, standard components, standard pistons or whatever, might be two, three, four grams off. And for normal driving on the street, that's fine. Uh, the higher you rev, the more everything is important. So I'm, I'm going to half a gram. So when the pistons come from a high quality manufacturer like Arias, um, they're really close because they're all precision made. So these would have been fine for the street just the way they came. They were maybe eight tenths of a gram off from each other. So I just had to just take a little, I don't know if you can see it, but I just took a little bit of a cut off of this, I smoothed it out and got them down. Uh, one of these, I think I took a little more. Here's one, I took a little more. Um, I took some from the outside edge uh, to get all the pistons to the same weight. Now, other people will balance the whole assembly, the piston, uh, the rods, the nuts, the everything all together and pick, pick and choose and get them so that they're all balanced in a set. But I want to balance each piece individually so that I'm not worried about, well, does, is this piston go with this rod? With the, are these nuts the right one for this piston? They all are balanced, so I just feel better about having everything the same, everything equivalent. Um, talking about taking a cutoff, oh, here's a, here's a set. I, I write down the, the weights on them. This is a set of pistons that are long rod pistons. See, are these different? Uh, yeah. But they're not quite as, uh, they're, they're cut a little bit differently. I'm not going to worry about that. But the actual pist uh, wrist pin hole is not quite as far, is not quite as close to the surface as the other ones. But uh, these in general are lighter. And the way they're lighter is, let's see, let me see if I can get it here. Um, I'll do a, 
kind of like this. This edge was machined off on a mill, which is obviously the best way to do it. I just don't have a mill that's working right now. Um, and the reason it's machined off and the reason I want to, when I grind off things, I grind from this, this edge is that when it's a, a button, the button doesn't have much mass. The, the strength needs to be, um, for the wrist pin needs to be on the inside. So this is not a highly stressed area. So that's the key is you take weight off in an area that's not highly stressed, obviously. You, know, you take too much uh, material away and it explodes. Obviously, it's not a good thing. So anyway, so that that's that. So it's pretty simple to quote unquote balance pistons because they come really well balanced. You just have to do a little bit of work on them. The next step is going to be the connecting rods uh, where I balance the big end and then I balance the whole thing, the big end. I, I'll just talk about that in a different video. Um, but the whole process of doing this is the same, whether it's a Corvair, whether it's a V8 or, or whether it's a 9,000 RPM, you know, BMW or, or Mazda engine or anything like that, or, or a, a Honda. That's the balancing of pistons and rods and everything else is got, it's the same process. So I'm not sure uh, if it gave you too much more uh, insight into what's going on, but I thought I'd put something out there for now. Next step, rods. I'll do another short one about rods. And uh, got any questions, let me know. Got any comments, let me know. And we'll see you next time.